Sports Center of Coastal Carolina's Cyber School of Art. I'm Miss Alana. And I'm Jasper. And we're so glad you can be following along in today's lesson. In each one of these lessons, we'll be learning about an influential artist while learning about another subject. Today, we're going to have fun with a lesson called Shapes and Shadows with Matisse. Let's get started. Henri Matisse was born in France, the oldest son of a wealthy grain merchant. In 1887, he went to Paris to study law, but after he fell ill with appendicitis and his mom bought him art supplies to pass the time, he found a new passion and set out to be an artist. Initially, he painted still lifes and landscapes in a traditional style, but after being introduced to Impressionism and the work of Van Gogh, his style changed completely. Around 1900, Matisse was part of the Fauvism movement, where the artist's work focused on strong color choices and emotion. Later, he was influenced by Pablo Picasso, yet he still drew his inspiration from nature, unlike Picasso, who worked mostly from his imagination. In 1941, after being diagnosed with cancer, Matisse became bedridden and later wheelchair confined. Painting and sculpture became physical challenges, so he developed a new style of art from cut paper collage. These works of art became small, but eventually filled entire rooms created with boldly colored paper and expressive shapes. Matisse's cutouts are some of his most recognized works of art. For today's lesson, you will need 12 inches of aluminum foil, a few different colors of construction paper, a Sharpie marker, a glue stick, a pencil, some scissors, a flashlight, a ruler, and a piece of tape. Some of Matisse's most vibrant work was for a book that he created called Jazz in 1947. The whole book was made of a collection of 20 cut paper images. So each piece of paper would have been hand painted by him and his assistants, and then he cut it out to make these interesting images. We've got a few of the images here. In all, only 250 copies of the book were made. Let's have a look at some of the images from the book Jazz. And Jasper, could you have a look at the five examples that we have here and tell me something that you see that all five of these have in common? All five of them have figures that look like people. Well done. Each of them has at least one figure in them. What else do you see that they have in common? They all have a bunch of wavy shapes. Good. In art, we call these organic shapes, where the sides are just kind of wavy, like something you might see from nature. We also notice that the figures don't have a lot of details. It's almost as if they're just the shadow or the silhouette of the people. This was common in his cut paper collages. We see lots of pattern and repetition in the art, and of course, a bunch of really vibrant colors. Today, we're gonna actually be making two pieces of art. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to make a little sculpture of a person out of aluminum foil. And then we're gonna use the science of shadows with our flashlight to create a shadow of our little sculpture that we are going to incorporate into a cut paper collage. So before we do that, let's learn a little bit about the science of shadows. Now a shadow is created when a light source, such as the sun or a flashlight, shines down on an object. Some objects are transparent, an object that's transparent lets a lot of light through. Like this, we have some saran wrap from the kitchen. So this is completely see-through, transparent, lets all of the light through. The next thing we're gonna look at is something that's translucent. This material that we have here from the kitchen is translucent. It lets some of the light through, but not all of it. Finally, we have aluminum foil, which doesn't let any light through it. Jasper, do you know what it's called? An object that doesn't let any light through? Okay. Good job. Okay. So all objects are some form of transparent, translucent, or opaque. Because we want to make a shadow of our little figure today, we're going to use the opaque material of aluminum foil. So to get started, you're going to take a 12 inch piece of aluminum foil, got yours Jasper, and you're going to need a ruler so we can do a little bit of measuring, and a Sharpie marker. If you don't have one, a pencil will work or a pen, it's just going to be easier to see with a Sharpie marker. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take our ruler and put it at the top of our aluminum foil. 
Again, this is a 12 inch piece of aluminum foil. We want to divide it in thirds. So a third of 12 is four. Good job, four. So we're gonna make a little mark. You can line this up at the top of yours. We're gonna make a little mark right at the top of our aluminum foil where four inches are. Just a dot there. Then we're gonna go over another third of the way. So we've got a mark at four. Now we're gonna put a mark at eight. Eight, nice work. So put a little dot at eight. So if we have a dot at four and a dot at eight, we've divided the top of our foil into thirds. Now for the bottom, we're gonna slide our ruler down. And if we wanna make a mark halfway across this 12 inch square, where should we make our mark? At the six. Well done, so put a dot at the six. So the bottom is now split into halves. The last thing that we need to do is take our ruler and we're gonna make five inch line segments that stretch toward the middle. So we'll start on the bottom. So if you'll line your ruler up at your dot, you're gonna make a line that goes toward the center of the foil that's five inches long. Okay. Then at the top of the foil, where we have two dots, we're gonna make additional line segments that are only five inches long that go towards the center of the foil again. So we're gonna line up our ruler and this doesn't have to be exact, it's as close as you can get it to five inches long for each one of our little line segments. Good job there. And one more right here that'll be five inches long. So now we've got our marks. The top is divided into thirds and the bottom is divided into halves. Now we're gonna take a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut each one of our line segments. So one there, one there, and one there. So go ahead and cut along each of your line segments. So now, if you really use your imagination, you're gonna to start to visualize how this is gonna turn into a little person or figure. The top three segments are gonna be our two arms with our head in the middle. So this little fellow right here is gonna become our head. At the bottom, we have two segments. Jasper, what do you think these two at the bottom are gonna be? If we've got arms and a head up here, what do you think legs. we're gonna do with these? Legs, very good. So these two are gonna become our legs. Again, you've gotta really use your imagination right now, but it's gonna to come together in just a second. All right, so now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna very, we're gonna turn it back around so that the little legs are at the bottom, facing yourself. And we're gonna very carefully start pinching the foil softly towards the center. The center is gonna be like where the torso is, the area there that doesn't have any cuts. So go ahead and make gentle squeezes toward the middle. You can do yours, Jasper, and I'll do mine very softly because Aluminum foil is a very fragile material, so we don't want it to rip. We're just gonna kind of squeeze it in the middle. Push it up. Yeah, a little bit from each side. You don't have to do quite here, just in the middle. So just here and here. See how I'm just doing it in the middle? It's almost making like a little bit of a bow tie shape because I'm only squeezing right here in the middle. So see if you can squeeze these two together right here and those two. And then after you have sort of squeeze it in the middle, you're gonna see that you have two at the bottom here and three at the top. And if you really use your imagination, have a look at that. Does it start to look like a person a little bit? Yeah? Okay, so we're gonna keep working. Again, we're gonna squeeze until we get all the way to the center, very gently. All right, let's have a look at yours. Is it starting to look like a little person? We've got some arms two legs, and a head. Okay, next we're gonna work on the legs. So take one of your legs down here at the bottom and we're gonna squish it up. Again, gently squeezing it together till it sort of becomes just side to side. Yeah, we won't really have to roll up any, just squeeze side to side to side on all of these. Nice. 
Now we're gonna take our other little leg, very gently. You wanna make sure you're not twisting or pulling it because it'll break off. So very gently, now we're squeezing the next leg. Good. Now we're gonna work on the arms in the same fashion. So we're gonna very gently crumple it up like this. You don't have to get it too tight, but crumple it with a loose crumple. We have an arm, and then another loose crumple on this side. I'm going to try not to make it quite too flat because we want this to be a little three-dimensional shape in the end. So we're trying to kind of loosely crumple it so that we leave ourselves a little bit of room to give it some form later. Good. Now do your other arm. So our head's looking a little square and flat, a little flat Stanley there, right? We need to make it into a ball now. So this one's a little bit different because we're making a ball shape, not long cylinder shapes. So we're gonna gently crumple the head shape here, really softly. We don't want it to be too tight or he'll end up with a little head that's too small for his figure. We wanna to try to keep our proportions. But I'm very gently squeezing this. So you could make a whole art project just out of aluminum foil with little people. You could make a scene from a book with aluminum foil now that you know how to make figures. You could go on and on having fun with foil, but be sure to ask your grown-ups first before you use all of their foil. Looking good. Now we're just gonna gently kind of push in any little areas that might be sticking out to make it not look quite round. And we have our figure. All right, so now we're gonna have a look again at some of the figures that we see in Matisse's Jazz Series. Now, the one thing that we notice about a lot of these figures is that they have movement. All the images for Jazz were based upon people from the circus or from the theater, really fun imagery. And the title of each one of these artworks kind of tells you what's in the picture. But setting that aside, let's pretend that we don't know what it is. Let's think of what we think these people are doing because they're all moving. All right, so let's start over here, Jasper. What about this guy, Icarus? What does he look like he's doing? He looks like he's dancing. He looks like he's dancing to me too. Or even falling through the sky, we see he's got one arm up higher than the other and his legs are kind of moving. Especially knowing that the book is called Jazz, that could be exactly what he's doing. Kind of dancing there through space. Now, this one, it's called the toboggan. Now in the South, we don't really have a toboggan very much at our home because it doesn't snow a lot. But a toboggan is another word for a sled. So, if you know that this is called a toboggan, what do you think this figure's doing? Maybe this down here, on um, this little black square, could be his toboggan, and then he's falling off of it. Definitely looks like he's falling, right? We see his legs in the air. Oh, yes, maybe this is the snowbank here. We see his legs in the air, he's got an arm in the air, so he is kind of upside down there falling with a lot of movement. Okay, what about this figure. Can you tell us what you think this figure is doing? I kind of think it's a circus because if you look really closely, this kind of looks like the word circus. It does. In fact, it's C-I-R-Q-U-E. And remember, Matisse was from France. So it is. You're exactly right. It's circus in French. So we have a figure here. Do you think it's a boy or a girl? I think it's a girl. A girl? Very good. The figures don't have a lot of detail to them. We can see that this one has long hair. Maybe it's a girl. Let's have a look at this one. Now, I love the color choices. We've got the rich magenta with the lavender, the light blue, the dark blue, the black shapes. This is one of my favorites. Now, I could not tell exactly what this was. I will be honest until I saw the title of it. But the title tells us it's the knife thrower. Can you kind of see how this pink figure has sort of a knife above their head? And this lady, she's just standing there very, very bravely. 
because we see sometimes in the circus, we'll see people who have this trick where they are so precise with throwing knives that there will be a human there and they'll throw the knives and it will go all around and not cut the person. So this lady here is a very brave circus figure for sure. And then finally, we have the one at the top of this white figure. What do you think this white figure is doing? It kind of looks like they're swimming. Kind of like they're swimming. Now, ironically, we don't see a lot of blue in the water where this person is swimming, but it's called the swimmer in the tank. And what do you think about this red shape here in the corner? What does that look like? It looks like a semicircle. It does, it's part of a circle. When I first saw it, I even thought it looked kind of like an apple, maybe because it was round and that's what makes me think of that. But actually, it's a person who's looking at the swimmer. So if we kind of think of it that way, he's looking up and here's his eye and his eyebrow. Knowing that, does it look like a person now? Yeah. Now that you know. So again, a lot of the times in the jazz book, if you look at the title of the artwork, it gives you a lot more information. So what we have here is a very kind of abstraction of the real world. Again, he started painting with lots of detail in the beginning of his career, but toward the end of his career, when he just did his paper cutouts, he made these fantastic, bright images that we know and recognize so much as Matisse now. He started off making these kind of small, and then they filled up entire rooms. So what we're gonna do is take our little figures here, and we're going to show you how to make a shadow of the figure that we're then going to cut out to be the figure in your cut paper collage. For this next part, you're going to need to bring your little aluminum foil figure and you're going to need a flashlight. You're going to need a piece of paper, whatever color paper you want your figure to be. And it can be any color. So Jasper, have a look through the papers and see what color you want your figure to be. And we're gonna need to lower the lights and we're just gonna use our little flashlight as a light source here. Before we do that, the final little step is that we need to decide what our figure is doing. Yours already has this very interesting pose. Have a look at Jasper's, it's kind of leaning over with its arms outstretched. Mine is very flat looking still. Again, we wanna give it some movement. So decide, is your person swimming or dancing or doing a toe touch in the air. So you can bend and shape now your little figure and then we're gonna get ready to make the shadow of it. So whatever shape this figure has is going to be the movement that you're gonna have in your art. Jasper, what can you think? What do you think your guy might be doing over there? I think he's gonna be kind of falling out of the sky. Falling through the sky or maybe, maybe somebody can be playing baseball and they're holding their baseball bat over their shoulder or kicking a soccer ball or whatever you like to do. So take a minute and pose your figure and come back with your flashlight, piece of construction paper, a pencil, and your figure and we'll get started making our shadows. So we're back. We've lowered the lights. We've got our shadow and we took a little piece of the tape and we taped our figures to a piece of paper so that it's standing up. Now's the fun part. We're gonna play around with our light source and we're gonna make our shadow on the paper. And once we get the shadow in the way we want it, we're gonna trace it so we can cut it out. Now the thing about shadows are, a shadow will change by the direction that the light's coming from. So whether it's above it or behind the figure, notice how the shadow changes. The other thing that we can change is the proximity. So we can go closer and we can go further away. Jasper, which makes my shadow smaller? When it's closer or further away? Further away. Very good, see how that works? And the farther away your light source is, the smaller your figure is. And the closer it is, the bigger it is. So we're gonna let Jasper go first. I am going to hold the light source for him and you tell me if you want it bigger or smaller. I want it a little bit smaller. A little smaller, okay, and you want it there. in the middle, there? Yeah. Okay, so I am gonna hold the flashlight. So if you don't have anybody to hold the flashlight for you, you can find a way to just prop it up on a chair. And you're just gonna kind of sketch around it. We're gonna be cutting this out so the line does not have to be perfect. 
Your aluminum foil has some texture. It's gonna be kind of bumpy. You don't need to draw all of those little bumps. When we cut it out, we're gonna cut it out kind of smooth like Matisse's figures. So we're just capturing the shape of the form here. One thing that was really interesting about Matisse is when he was cutting his shapes out of paper, he usually didn't draw the shapes first. He just started cutting. He said, I draw with my scissors. Very good. All right, so now we have it drawn and I'm gonna do mine. So let's see, find a way I can, um, there we go, maybe a little farther away uh, and a little more of an angle. How about, let's see, let me find, my little guy has uh, a baseball stance. What about there? Does that look good? Kind of like he's swinging a baseball bat. So I'm gonna quickly, thank you for holding that. I'm gonna quickly sketch my baseball player guy in here. All right, very good. All right, so we're gonna get the lights back on and we're gonna cut our figures out and we'll meet you back here. So Jasper and I have had an opportunity now to cut out our figures that we made from our shadows. They look a lot like our little foil figures, don't they? So we're done with these guys now. We're gonna put these aside and we're gonna focus on making our cut paper collage. So you're just gonna need your little figure that you cut out as well as some scraps of a variety of different colors of paper. Now, one thing that I notice in all five of these images is the use of the color black. It really kind of gives the eye a place to move around and go to. So I've included some black paper for us to use in our designs. For our main subject matter, we have our figure, but what we want to do now are cut out some strips of paper, some little organic shapes, maybe some wavy lines of paper. They can have straight edges or wavy edges. They can be like these little bursts here. And we're just going to cut out a whole bunch of shapes. Then we're gonna lay the shapes all around our paper in different configurations until we get it the way we like it. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is glue it all down. So now, Jasper, I want you to have a look at the papers here and find some colors that you might wanna use. We're gonna draw our little shapes if you want first, or you can be like Matisse and draw with your scissors. So I like to start with more shapes than I might actually need in the end. That way I can move them around a lot. If you just wanna draw with your scissors, you just pick up your scissors and you start cutting. So again, you can make wavy lines like that. Or if you wanna draw first, you can. I'm gonna make some of these fun little starburst kind of shapes. So I might draw that one first. And Jasper, you can go ahead and start cutting out some shapes there. So you just want to kind of turn your paper back and forth. I'm making a star. What are you going to make in yours? I really like to include also some of these shapes that we see oftentimes that have all of these wavy edges. It reminds me kind of like of a coral shape or a sea whip. tip that we can use, that Matisse used, was keeping your scraps of paper. So for instance, once you cut out a little wavy shape or one of these little coral kind of shapes, you can save this scrap and include it in your collage. So what I want us to do is notice how this one is negative space and this one is positive space. So now you actually have two elements that you can include in your collage. Do you see anywhere in one of these where he has used the scrap like this with the negative space in his work? It's almost like a scavenger hunt. I found one. Did you find one? Can you show us? Over here. Very good. So in the knife thrower, we see how he's used the scrap or the negative space from one of his cutout shapes and he's glued it on too. So be sure you save all of these little scraps. You might want to include it somehow in your collage. All right, so pick another color. You've got some orange and some blue. What other color would you like to use? 
Some more blue? blue. All right, so we're gonna keep cutting here. And I like to make sure that we use at least a little bit of black. So here's some black for you, Jasper. And I've got some. Uh, I think I'm going to maybe make some more of these fun little star shapes. And this time I'm just going to paint with my scissors. I'm not drawing first. There's no wrong way to do this. Any straight lines or wavy lines that you want will work. here and then maybe just a big rectangle of black would be nice too to kind of break up some of the color Our triangular shapes so you want to keep moving your shapes around they can overlap one another or be beside each other until your composition, the way things are arranged, pleases your eye. So take a few minutes and get your shapes cut out. Make sure that you play around with a different assortment of arrangements of ways that you can put things in front of each other, beside each other, around each other. And then when we come back in a minute, we'll have a chance to glue it all down. Now that we've had a chance to lay our shapes down, now we can glue them. I like to always remember to put the glue on the smaller shape, not on the background. So choose one of your shapes, and you're going to flip it over. Make sure you put a lot of glue on there. We don't want our corners of our shapes peeling up. Load it up with glue stick and rub it down nice and smooth. Now, if you ever want to do this project again and want to be even more authentically Matisse, you can try painting paper and then using your own painted paper to cut out shapes. Matisse was wheelchair bound, as we learned later in his years, so he had a group of assistants that helped him with his work. He was very particular about the colors and shades of each color that were on the painted paper. He made lots of artistic choices that had people helping him. Eventually, some of these cut paper collages filled entire rooms. I remember reading a story about Matisse and how he went to go swimming at a swimming pool that he had been looking forward to going to and after the experience, he was so disappointed that it wasn't as fun and exciting as he thought it was going to be. So, when he got back to his house, he filled the entire room with his own cut paper swimming pool that he said he enjoyed a lot more than the real thing. Of course, some of these images had to go way up on the wall. And since he was in a wheelchair, he couldn't get up there to put them there. So. He would explain very meticulous details to his assistants where he wanted each one of the images to be placed. They've been able to preserve that mural actually that he made and you can now see it in a museum. They cut the wallpaper right off of his walls with the images with it and preserved them. Jasper, what was your favorite part of today's lesson? My favorite part was when we did the shadows. Yeah, isn't that fun? You could make some more now that you know, right? All you need is a little piece of foil to make a figure. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take just a couple of minutes and finish up our gluing. And I want you to do the same, and then we'll come back and share our work. All right, so we've had a chance to finish our collages. What do you think? Now, the last thing that we have to do, of course, is give an artist signature down in the corner. And voila. We're so glad that you enjoyed the lesson today. If you would like to, you can always download a PDF of the lesson in the description below. That way you can do it again or you can share it with a friend. 
We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.